So the Calgary real estate market is hot. The province is hot. There's huge opportunities, Calgary surrounding area for real estate investors. I'm joined today by Arshad Rashid of Century 21, Century 21 Bravo Realty and RPM Bravo. So real property management and Century 21. Arshad, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's always good to be back. So Arshad, you know, we see what's going on in Calgary economically, very strong. I mean, the whole province is really doing uh, very well economically. And when we look at real estate, we have to look at what the opportunities are. And right now, given what's happening in Calgary, secondary suites, I think is a pretty hot topic. So give us some insights into what Calgary is doing in their secondary suite initiative given the demand for rentals is kind of continuing to grow to say the very least. And let's start to break this down where real estate investors can, I guess, unpack and get into this whole conversation around secondary suites. Yeah, it's a, it's a topic that I am vested in pretty deep. I enjoy talking about it and I, I've got good insight on what's happening. So, since the city has been working on this for the last few years now, they came up with a plan. They wanted to get registered suites online. Uh, number one was to get more suites, encourage people to have more suites just to meet the housing demand in the rental market. And they forecasted that this demand would increase uh, in the future. And then second, there was a lot of illegal suites in the city. At one point, I believe it was about 20 plus thousand illegal suites in the city. They wanted those to come online be registered and legalize them to meet safety and security standards. Um, so there's two things, there's fire code and there's building code to meet mm -hmm. there, but to encourage existing uh, landlords, because they don't want to take any suites or housing opportunities off the market uh, or have people end up on, on, on uh, with, without shelter just because the, lead, the, the, the suite doesn't meet um, legal code. So they came up with an amnesty period. And since they came out with it, they keep extending it because the, the program has become pretty popular and quite streamlined. And reason why is they want to encourage more registered suites. Um, and what's happened right now, the amnesty period has been extended until December of 2026. And this is a great opportunity for uh, existing uh, homeowners, existing landlords that may have uh, basement suites that are not registered. The amnesty period basically means you only have to meet fire code. And when you meet fire code, it's it's quite simple. You need to have egress windows, a fire rated uh, drywall in the furnace room, completely drywall, the fire rated door, interconnected uh, smoke and carbon uh, detectors. And that's pretty much it. There might be a few little nuances, um, but that's the, the, the gist of it. And the beauty is they've waived any fees associated to that. Um, so permitting... Is there, a, is there a need for secondary heating? So in other words, do we have to have separate heating up and down or what's the protocol around that right now? So that is not required if you fall into the amnesty, um, which means as long as the suite that you have in your basement was existing prior to March 12, 2018, then you can qualify for the amnesty and only meet fire code. Um, yep. If you don't and you, your suite is newer than that, or if you don't fall in that category for some reason, then you would have to have a meet building code, which would require secondary heat. You know, I think that Calgary politics are lots of controversy around there, given what's going on with the mayor. But that yeah. aside, I have to give Calgary City Council a lot of, I guess, uh, credit for this initiative. I mean, at the end of the day, we look at what's happening economically in the province and in Calgary specifically, where you've got so many people moving into that city, into that area, and you have to accommodate uh, with some rental, I guess, inventory, if you will, to keep it simple. And, and ultimately, by if they were not to be amicable in terms of getting that rental inventory up, I mean, rents would continue to spike because of the already short supply. I mean, that would even create a, a bigger gap in terms of the supply, which would drive rents even higher. So I think it's it's a good initiative. It's a good political move. I think it's smart and it's necessary. Now, 
you sit on kind of both sides of the fence in terms of what you do with real property management because you are a property management. You have a number of doors under management within RPM, as well as on the Century 21 Realty side of it with uh, Century 21 uh, Bravo Realty, you see both sides of this equation. So let's break this down a little bit from a real property management point of view. So in other words, you're in the trenches every day, you're working with property management and your team. When you look at secondary suites, is there something that I guess rental housing providers need to pay attention to in terms of being competitive? Because here's my, here's what I have learned over 20 plus years of investing and working with real estate investors. When the market is hot, like Calgary is, and it's still got lots of room to run, I'm saying that, I believe that, and all the economic data points in that direction. My point is this, is that when you look at a market that is this hot, everybody's a real estate genius. You know, you make money, it seems, in spite of yourself. You get tenants and you get ridiculous amounts of rent in spite of yourself. I always look and say, okay, yes, it'll rent today. Yes, you've got tenants today. What's it going to be if the market were to get soft? So in other words, if vacancy went to 5% instead of 1.5%, you know, what is your unit going to be the one that they choose when they have other choices? Right now, there's very limited choices. So the reason I ask you that question is, what do, what do rental housing providers who are being savvy, what do they need to consider in a secondary suite? I'm talking about how are they finished? Do they have to be upgraded? You know, is there a size that seems to be a sweet spot? Give us a little bit of insights and in when we look into the future, what do we need to be doing today for a secondary suite? Yeah, and it, it comes down to um, as long as the, the, the suite is maintained properly, obviously if it's you know newer renovations, uh, brighter rooms, those make a huge difference. Uh, a lot of times to meet the, the, the fire code, you just have to have egress windows in the bedrooms, which means larger windows. Yes. Uh, but a lot of uh, landlords miss the point. What about the living room? Uh, mm. You have the same size window uh, equal or greater to in the living room in the basement. It doesn't feel like a basement. Um, and it, it's more inviting, brighter, natural light coming in, uh, lighter colors to make the space feel bigger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I prefer carpet in, in the basement because it's a little more cozy and a little yeah. more uh, welcoming. Um, yeah. Parking is uh, is a big deal too. As long as the, if you have a designated parking area for that basement uh, tenant, uh, it definitely helps. And then two bedrooms. Two bedrooms would be ideal. Uh, mm -hmm. People would like to have that second bedroom. Whether you got one person down there or a family, uh, that second bedroom comes in handy. So one bedroom, you know, it, it's it still achieves you good cash flow. But long term, when there's options on the market. You may, you may, uh, you will definitely lose out to a second bedroom, whether they need it or not. It's a bonus. Now, tell me something when it comes to basement suites for most of them, you know, to me, especially in a secondary suite scenario where you're taking a bungalow, for example, and you've got a basement suite, you know, you want it brighter, you want those windows as large as you can get them, you know, code aside, you know, egress aside, you want those windows bigger and brighter. What about storage? Is, is, you know, is a, is an investor smart to consider a storage space for those that are renting basement suites? To me, it's kind of like, you know, it's storage in a basement suite to me sounds like it lands as a big value to the tenant. But what's your thoughts on that? Absolutely. So I've seen some great uh, utilization of space. <laughs> One would be when we say suites, you typically imagine a bungalow. You, you, you've got uh a separate door going down there and maybe you have a shared laundry or a mechanical room that is laundry those spaces could be utilized where you have a nice separation for storage for the basement tenant um or any type of uh, uh legalized basement suite um that is important uh and then utilize the space under the stairs there's always space under the stairs i've seen some really cool cubbies made i've seen uh some really nice storage uh, ideas where there's shelving built in um, that's you know exposed to the to the uh, living room. Those things make a huge difference. Calgarians in general, we have a lot of stuff, and over time you tend to build things up. And so do tenants. Tenants will will have stuff, and if they've got room, you know that that'll keep your tenant longer, 
and happier. And there's, it's just the, the space is utilized much better. So when we're looking at tent uh, rental ranges in terms of pricing, so if uh, somebody's doing rough math in their head and doing a little bit of cash flow projections, uh, let's say, you know, your average, you know, you, would you really want a basement suite smaller than, let's say, 800 if you can avoid it, 800 square feet? Or is there a sweet spot? The sweet spot would be 900 to 1,000 square feet, in my opinion. Um, okay. 700 square feet is fine. Anything less than than 700 it becomes uh, quite, you know, it's, it's tight and you're yeah. going to get other suites that'll take preference over yours all day. And what rental rate in terms of range, what are you getting when you break down Calgary a little bit, you know, maybe Southwest versus Northeast? I don't know. Give me some kind of ranges in terms of rents in that basement suite market. So believe it or not, the range when it comes to that is it's, it's evened out um, quite a bit, uh, mm -hmm. but I would say a good range for a basement suite. If you're looking at a typical bungalow, uh, you're looking at anywhere from sixteen hundred, sorry, fourteen hundred to sixteen hundred dollars a month. Wow, for the basement. Crazy. It's getting up there now. When we look at the availability, let's put on your Century Twenty One hat. And when we look at availability of units, so I want to hold it. I want to go back one more. So when you look at the city of Edmonton giving their stamp of approval. Are tenants looking for that? Are they looking for something that has been approved by the city? There, Because there is a there is some type of process in place for Calgary to say, okay, this suite meets code or this suite meets whatever the protocol is for a legal basement suite. Uh, are tenants looking for that? Yeah, absolutely they are. Um, it's it, it offers them a little bit, okay, there's some safety standards here. Uh, and it's become more mainstream. So the city's done a good job and people are aware. Information is everywhere. They're aware. Mm -hmm. There's a secondary suite registry online where you can go and put any address in the city. It'll tell you if it's legalized or not. Um, mm -hmm. It'll even show you that it's, an, there's an application started and it hasn't been completed yet. Uh, so people are aware. The information is out there. And yeah. uh, if you have that, it's much easier to rent it out. So let's go one step deeper in this. And I don't know if you have the answer to this, but when we look at a legal suite, when it comes to insuring, because Alberta has been so controversial around the insurance industry as a whole, but certainly when it comes to rental units, does having that stamp of approval by city of Calgary impact insurance? Does it save you some money on the rates? Do they even ask the question where, if anywhere, does the insurance play into that or does it? Um, it, it does. Insurance companies are starting to catch on. Uh, it never was a thing in the past. And if you voluntarily gave that info, they would take take it into consideration and uh, adjust their premiums for it. But it does it does help. You're you're legal. You're you're considered, and it's it's formalized. So they'll look at it in that sense. And there's no excuse for them if something was to occur in the future to uh, waive your insurance. Say you, know, you you can't be insured for this because we didn't know this there's a illegal suite down there or whatever it may be. So it, it just legitimizes the whole process. And yeah. uh, as insurance companies catch on, I do believe it'll play a big factor in what your premium will be, what they approve um, to, to be insured. Mm -hmm. And then, okay. So then when you put your century 21 hat on, I mean, the question of the day is, is there any deals out there? Is there any availability of units that can be suited number one, are suited already number two that you can bring up to code. Is there any opportunities in Calgary? Because I hear all sorts of mixed reports on, yes, there's deals. No, there's not deals. Listen, you've got a very strong brokerage in Century 21 with what you do, Arshad. What are you coming across? Well, um, speaking of that, like on the property manager side, we've, we, we manage hundreds of doors on the Century 21 real estate side. We have hundreds of agents and we definitely have a strong presence and i'm starting to see more and more if you do a simple search uh, if you did this two years ago you wouldn't see many you'd see maybe a few on the market now you do a simple search for anything that is legalized um, i'm checking that as we speak right now you're gonna see you know anywhere from 20 to 30 maybe 70 uh properties in the city um mm. where and that's low just because our inventory is low as we as inventory levels replenish and get better, uh, we're going to see a, a huge number. And those properties 
definitely do better as far as price points and resale value goes because that's what investors are looking for and there's two things one a lot of people want to buy these things they're already already done so they'll mm -hmm. pay a premium for it because they don't have to put in the work and time uh two it's easier to get a mortgage a lot of lenders are starting to take in that uh legal suite income as consideration anywhere yep. from 50 to 100 percent of uh, uh the income to get a higher approval rate so the demand is definitely um we're seeing and i'm seeing a lot more and just compared to two three years ago i would say the number of properties coming online is triple so now the question of the day if they're still watching the investors are asking is there anything that i can get that's going to cash flow absolutely so i think right now uh just because the way the rental rates are if you do your numbers right and you've got an agent that is investment uh specializing in investments and is aware what the market rents are one mm -hmm. thing that people make a mistake as investors i see them they'll go on rent faster or some of the rental sites look at posted rent rates and say okay and use those numbers well if you've got a company or an agent that has access to actually rented properties and not just posted uh, and you know what the rent rates are then you can actually see the numbers are slightly lower of what they actually rent for because people negotiate mm -hmm. those you have those numbers and you've got an, an agent that's investment minded can give you a pro forma and give you the numbers so definitely we're seeing uh, cash flow on majority of properties but where the price points are going if you just had a typical single family home and you want to rent it out as a whole property uh they may it may not cash flow depending on what your down payment is but if you have a legal basement suite and potentially a garage to rent out a separate revenue you're definitely going to cash flow fantastic as we wind this down any party guidance that we can give viewers today i mean other than to reach out to you with rpm or century 21 as a trusted partner of the real estate investment network arshad we're always wanting to support the community and finding deals continuing to invest in capital invest their capital into real estate Alberta is a very strong market. Calgary is a strong market. What's your kind of parting guidance, if you will, for investors? Do you have any? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, try to stay away from anything with a condo fee. <laughs> and uh, if you are going to invest, really look at the opportunities. If it's already legalized, sweet. Look at the numbers and the cash flow. And uh, chances are it's going to cash flow uh, positive 95% um, of the time. And then look at what is has an illegal suite, and there's your opportunity to build it, get uh, apply for the amnesty. Make sure that when you're buying that property, if the suite was existing prior to uh, March of 2018, and the city does ask for proof, um, they're starting to ask more and more because people are trying to get away with newer suites, so they ask for proof. And as long as in your offer stage you have that as a condition, you've got some kind of proof. There's opportunity there to get the property for a better price and then build that legalize it your cash flow goes up your property appreciates in value because it's worth more on the market um so that would be my my uh, suggestion look at properties that can have legal suites and a garage where you can have multiple revenue streams that'll help mitigate risk as well if you get a tenant that leaves in the, uh, halfway through their lease you at least have cash flow coming in but if you've got a single property or an apartment or a townhouse condo uh, and that tenant leaves, you don't have rental income coming in at all until you place that tenant. So I think it's it's beautiful. And uh, on another topic, we can discuss about potential zoning changes and the blanket zoning that's coming in that could pro potentially increase even more cash flow. Uh, lastly, right now in the city of Calgary, 76 as of today, 76 properties with legalized basement suites. Wow. That's great. So folks, our shatter sheet, reach out real property management, century 21, Calgary based, Calgary focused. He's got your back. If you're looking for great deals, our shad, as always, thanks for your insights and your time, my friend. Like always, uh, good to be here. Thank you for having me.